Hello, I'm Mark Rossner. I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco Server Products Group. This video will be a live demo of Red Hat 7.0 interactive installation on UCSM series using the generic OS DVD install image and the KVM virtual media. CentOS 7.0 installation is identical except for the logos. I'll do a quick look at service profile template that I have set up for the server I'm going to install. The template refers to a storage profile that configures the servers of virtual local disks. If you're not yet familiar with storage profiles and virtual local disk concepts for UCSM series, please first watch the configuration video that I have created entitled UCSM series virtual local storage. After that, we'll look at which driver disk images I need to extract from the master Cisco.com M series driver download. In order to install on the virtual local storage, we will have to insert the SNIC driver at install time. The ENIC driver is already part of the OS, but the one in there in the installer is downrev. So while we're at it, we might as well insert the latest driver at install time too. Finally, I'll do the live demo of the install procedure, during which I'll also mention some other gotchas and best practices. Okay, this is the UCS M series master ISO file that you download from cisco.com. You'll have to manually descend into there and extract the individual driver disk images. This is the driver disk version of the SNIC driver, DD, and the driver disk version of the ENIC driver. Both of those will be able to present early in the install time. These drivers each come in three formats, this driver disk format, there's an RPM format, and there's a source code format. However, this SNIC specifically will have to use this driver disk format. The ENIC, we'd have a choice because we could install it later because it's just an upgrade, but we might as well install it at install time. Okay, let's take a quick, quick look at the service profile template I'm using in this example. Here I have a template named a Linux template. It's not associated with any server pool, so I'll have to do one step at a time and instantiate the template in order to create a service profile and then do the association. I just wanted to quickly look at this storage tab and specifically this new LUN configuration, which is the virtual local storage feature. I'm using a storage profile that I previously created called One Boot Disk which specifies one disk size 50 gig that specifies a disk group policy, RAID 1 mirrored, which will be implemented at the chassis level. Once again, for more details about this, see the video that describes the concepts and the detailed configuration of the virtual storage feature. That's pretty much the only unique thing for M-Series. I do happen to have ETH0 and ETH1 going to A and B. There's nothing different here at all than B series and boot order so that I boot off the CD DVD first and then the local disk, which is the virtual local disk. Second, and I'm ready to do an interactive installation off of the DVD media. And that's pretty much it. Let me create a service profile from this template. Here I'll call it AAA Red Hat 70 so that I find it at the top of the list, just like they used to do in the old yellow pages when we actually had a book. Okay. Here's my service profile. It's not associated with any server yet. Let me do the association and I'm just going to pick some random server. Okay, notice how fast this configuration of the service profile takes place. This is in real time. Nothing up my sleeve. I'm not doing any cuts in the video at this time. Not to promise I didn't do any before. There, it's already done. Let me take a quick look now that the service profile is associated back at the virtual local storage feature and you can see the LUN is now online. It's a real 50 gig LUN carved out of the chassis storage. And I'm ready to go and install onto that, though I will have to insert the drivers first. Okay, let me invoke the KVM. Set up my virtual media to point to the Red Hat 7.0 DVD image. Activate virtual devices. Map CD DVD. Here it is. And I'm ready to power this guy on.
and it's fallen into the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.0 DVD installer. I just want to show you what happens if I don't tell it explicitly right here at boot time that I need to use a driver disk for the virtual local storage disk. You'll see that it falls into the graphic installer, but it won't be able to detect a disk because there's no driver for it, and you'll just have to start all over again. So here I am having fallen into the graphical installer. And notice it says no disk selected, and I can go look at this destination, and there are no local disk whatsoever. There's nothing I can do to remedy it at this time without getting back and just rebooting the whole thing and specifying that I need a driver disk in the boot options of the installer itself, which is what I'll do. So I'll reset this hard right now. So now it's going to fall into the install menu again. And I'm going to go up and instead of just hitting return, I'm going to hit tab as instructed. And all I have to do is add this DD option which means that I intend to supply it a driver disk. So it's prompted me for driver disk selection because I've told it that I want to do a driver disk. Let me unmap the Red Hat installation DVD and map the SNIC driver disk ISO file, which is the one that I have to have because otherwise it couldn't detect an install disk. So I'll go unmap the master Red Hat. map again and browse to my DD version of the SNIC driver that I showed you before. Map that. Now I can hit R for refresh here so that it rescans the virtual DVD drive and it finds that I have a different CD with a different a UUID identifier and now I can select that and say yes I want that to be my driver disk and it found the RPM file inside there that's for the SNIC. I can hit number one to say yes I do want that one and I still have to continue. I can't eject that driver disk yet until it actually reads off the RPM and copies it into temp space. I could be just done with driver disks, but as I said before, I might as well just do the same thing with the ENIC driver and be done with it and not have to worry about it after install time. So before I do anything, let me unmap the SNIC driver disk and map the ENIC driver disk. Say refresh here again so it rereads the media. Choose the DVD player again. Notice that it found the RPM version of the ENIC driver. Select it, number one. Say C to continue so it reads that RPM into temporary storage. And now I'm ready to continue with the Red Hat install. So now I have to unmap the ENIC driver disk and map back. my main Red Hat install DVD. And now I can continue. Now I've fallen once again into the graphical installer. Notice this time it has found a disk. It tells me that automatic partitioning is selected. It still requires me to look inside here and confirm. Yes, it found the MRAID from the chassis virtual local storage that's provided to the server and if I just do everything as the defaults that's fine notice it will use the Red Hat built-in volume manager which is always a good idea please keep using the built-in volume manager in Red Hat and CentOS and the reason is if you ever want to grow the root file system here in M series for example I could just modify the storage profile add another disk, and then use the built-in volume manager to increase the amount of space available for the root file system, and then just grow the root file system without having to reinstall the whole system. So let me just look at one more thing. Notice on this Red Hat CentOS 7.0, the default software selection is minimal. This is as minimal as you could possibly get. I believe it doesn't even have like an if config command. So let me just choose some other options whatever but you probably don't want the absolute minimal install say done checking all that and i'm ready to begin the installation 
and everything else will proceed normally. There's nothing else that's UCSM series specific. Thank you for listening.